Welcome to the Sports Playbook, where we discuss its solutions to issues that impact sports. I'm your host, Angela Hazlett. Today's guest is Zach Fingerhut, a soccer referee in Northern Virginia, Maryland area. We're here to discuss officiating in soccer, the journey of a soccer referee. Welcome, Zach. Hi, Professor Hazlett. Thank you so much for this um, this honor and distinction of, of being on your broadcast. Uh, you know, I'm truly flattered and uh, really grateful for this opportunity. Well, I am really excited to have you here and your expertise. I know soccer is clearly your passion. You've grown up playing soccer. You were recruited and played a couple of years of Division I men's soccer at Wake Forest University. You've dabbled in coaching soccer. Um, your day job now is in ticket sales for the Loudoun United Football Club, uh, which is a professional soccer team in Leesburg, Virginia. And as I've as if that were not enough, you at night and on weekends referee soccer games. So how did you get your start in officiating soccer matches? Yeah, so I think, you know, I formally began um, back in roughly 2013, like my senior year of high school. Um, you know, didn't really take it very seriously. Um, just kind of did games uh, on the weekends whenever I could. Um, you know, started off uh, at the lowest level with, uh, you know, recreation soccer, um, just to get my, you know, my feet wet and start, you know, building my, my self-confidence as a, as a soccer referee. Um, and I think just in starting to get the games under my belt and, and repetition, um, you know, I gradually uh, felt more confident in, in my abilities. And um, I knew from, the, you know, background I have growing up uh, playing, you know, high school and um, in club for a number of the, the top teams in my, in my area. Um, I, I knew that um, I had have a lot to bring to the, the officiating world and um, knew that, you know, I could really um, implement my, my knowledge, uh, you know, in, in a different uh, aspect of the game. And so, um, then, you know, fast forward many years later, uh, here I am now, um, you know, I feel extremely self-assured and um, I've managed to accomplish a lot and uh, still fairly young. I have some, some time on my side um, and um, I'm ecstatic and really excited to, um, to see, you know, what my future holds uh, with refereeing. Absolutely. And, and did you have a, do you have a favorite age group you like to officiate? Yeah, uh, great question. I think um, growing up, uh, I kind of had more of an inclination or preference to, uh, you know, referee the younger aged uh, kids. Um, and uh, I kind of realized that, um, you know, parents and uh, the spectators and players can be, you know, very uh, animated and energetic, especially at the younger ages. Uh, because, you know, there seems to be kind of not as, uh, you know, strong, like, knowledge of, of the game, I feel. Um, and, you know, people can become kind of overreactive uh, with certain things. And so then I kind of, uh, you know, felt more inclined uh, over the years to now um, probably prefer to officiate, like, older um, age groups. Um, it's interesting when I kind of, when I was... Uh, you know, a, a less experienced referee, um, I kind of uh, drifted towards uh, wanting to do like girls over boys. Um, and because, uh, you know, I guess just generally speaking, there's like less physic physicality um, and, you know, kind of chippiness, I guess. Um, but, you know, after, after time, uh, I've kind of uh, had a change of thought and, uh, now kind of um, have a preference to do more like, uh, you know, boys, um, because, you know, I'm able to relate more um, with them. Um, and, you know, there's uh, probably more, more ways that I can address boys too, um, you know, using different terms of endearment and stuff to, to keep players level-headed and prevent them from uh, doing, you know, uh, things they, they shouldn't, shouldn't, aren't supposed to be doing. Um, so 
yeah, I think, um, you know, I, now I probably, um, you know, I, I'm able to mix it up uh, a lot and uh, I don't really have, you know, I don't lean one way or the other now when it comes to refereeing, whatever games I'm assigned, um, you know, I, I, um, I do do the best I can and uh, yeah, I don't have really, you know, much of an option. Um, I just, you know, do, do as I'm told, um, just like I have uh, all throughout my life and, um, you know, put, put my best foot forward on, on, on the field. So let me get this straight. You, you feel like you can communicate differently when you're officiating boys and then um, you don't have the parents to deal with if you're dealing with an older age group. So there's some distinctions there in who you might get assigned to officiate. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you mostly got it um, right. I think, uh, you know, with girls, there's uh, only a certain amount of terms I can use uh, to, you know, get their attention. And, um, you know, I want, want to always uh, be sure that I am acting in a respectful manner. Um, you know, uh, boys have a behavioral tendency um, in, in sports to, you know, um, oftentimes be like melodramatic and, um, you know, just, uh, you know, push referees buttons some more, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, you know, females in sports um, are, you know, probably more level-headed, I, I would say. Um, and, you know, just even tempered. Um, so that's like a major difference I, I've noticed um, in, in my years of officiating is um, just picking up on these little like small cues and uh, like I said, different behavioral uh, tendencies and habits um, between, you know, uh, refereeing, uh, you know, different genders. That's a really interesting observation that you've noticed and, and maybe how you have to approach them. Um, I, I would love to kind of dive into what you were talking about and, and how it could be perceived as maybe challenging when you have uh, players who are giving a little pushback. Um, you mm -hmm. mentioned parents of younger children can often be very challenging, maybe because they don't have the knowledge of the game and aren't uh, familiar with why calls are being made and why penalties are being um, raised. Um, and there's this right. huge lack of officials. We're, we're short officials. Um, to referee matches. I know COVID has had a huge impact on the retention of officials with canceled games, um, but that's this abusive and violent treatment towards the officials that have also really impacted the sport. Um, the National Federation of uh, State of High School Sports has reported between 2018 and 2021 that 20% of its officials have actually quit. And now games are even being canceled due to lack of officials. So why do you stay in the game despite these challenges? Yeah, I mean, the, the stats and the figures don't lie. Um, you know, it, this is an issue um, that is very prevalent and serious uh, in our society today with, you know, referees dropping out, um, you know, uh, day by day as we, as we see. Um, but one of the main reasons I stick around and am still involved uh, so heavily is um, because of my passion for the, the game and, um, you know, primarily wanting to uh, give back to my community in, in a different capacity um, is that that's one of the main, um, you know, motives that, that keeps me going. And, um, you know, knowing that I have, you know, a lot of knowledge of, you know, the laws of the game as they're called or the rules um, of soccer and um, how it's supposed to be, um, you know, uh, implemented and, and carried out in, in a game um, has, has really, uh, you know, carried me a far away. So uh, I think, you know, most importantly, just like my, my love and uh, affection almost I have to, to soccer um, is um, what keeps, keeps me going. And, uh, you know, I have aspirations to, to move up and advance. And, um, 
uh, in, in the next uh, few years, become a, a regional, a U.S. Soccer Federation uh, regional referee. And uh, I'm really eager um, to, to see, you know, um, how, how far I can, I can go uh, with, with my refereeing uh, career. And I definitely want to get into talking a little bit more about the process of what it takes to become an official. But before we um, go that direction, um, do you feel like it's your responsibility to educate athletes, coaches, spectators about the rules while you're officiating and to maybe curb some of this bad behavior or to improve the game and to improve fairness? Um, do you feel like that's your responsibility or do you just call the game as you see it um, and leave it at that? Yeah, so to answer your question, I would say yes and no. I think um, uh, over time, I, I've learned that um, it's uh, it's paramount that I pick and choose my moments uh, when I do uh, explain uh, certain calls that I make or um, why I arrived at a decision that I did um, during a game, especially if um, there are incidents where um, the intensity level rises and the temperature of the game goes up. And, you know, I know I, I can sense or pick up that, um, you know, players and coaches um, just um, are, you know, becoming more like noisy um, than normal, then, um, you know, I might kind of uh, use that as a cue to, um, you know, be, be more vocal and, uh, you know, uh, conversational with, uh, with the players and, and the coaches, um, especially if there's a very critical call that um, could, could potentially change an outcome of a game. I think, um, you know, that that's one example of a time when, um, you know, communication is, is extremely important and, uh, you know, being able to, um, you know, feel like everyone is like, included um and you're you know you're not being i guess like you know uh i guess discriminatory or like just um you know feel like you're favoring like one team over another i think uh you know it, it's always um it i always you know referee with uh you know integrity and um just um you know being as honest as i can uh with, with myself yeah, that sounds like the ideal characteristics of a good referee. But sometimes these angry people get violent. I don't know if you've ever personally experienced that or, or you felt threatened for your physical and personal safety. Um, so how do you prevent things from escalating to that point where violence happens? Not that you can completely control that, but, yeah. and, and how do you keep yourself safe in those situations? Um, a lot of it comes down to, uh, you know, being dependent and reliant on your other, uh, you know, fellow referees uh, whom you, whom that I work with and, you know, having the trust in them that, you know, they, they will always stand behind me and have my back um, and support the calls that I make. Um, even though they, um, you know, might not always agree um, or, you know, see the exact same play that, that I did. Um, but I think um, also it's just very important that I always um, stay even keeled and, you know, like just remain calm um, e um, despite, you know, uh, high pressure uh, situations. And um, I, I think it's it's never it's ne nobody wins or it's never beneficial when um, you know I try to combat um, like an argument or dispute from by somebody else um, by like matching their their volume and, and tone of voice um, because then that just leads to getting into a shouting match and you know that's that's very unpro unproductive um, so. You know, I, I try to always do my best um, to, like I said, remain calm and um, uh, maintain my composure, um, uh, even with, you know, all of the, the background noise um, that 
that goes on uh, during my, you know, competitive matches uh, that I referee. That can't be easy to keep a calm demeanor and even leave the the stress of the situation behind and not take that kind of home with you to replay that in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, have there, you've mentioned that it was important to have support from your fellow fellow referees. Do you, have you ever had a situation where um, you were working with someone who was just wasn't a good match with you and maybe it had a difficult personality, made bad calls? And how did you deal with the uh, officials who maybe didn't operate in the same style or manner as, as you would. Yeah, there's, uh, there, there's like hundreds, if not thousands of referees who have crossed paths with uh, over the years. And, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, I must regrettably say, you know, not all of them are of the highest quality. Um, and personally, I hold myself to, you know, high standards and expectations and, um, you know, it can be sometimes uh, frustrating um, when I, I work with uh, other officials who, um, you know, may not be as kind of well-rounded or competent uh, as me. But um, I, I also use those uh, those games as opportunities to, um, you know, to teach others and um, just share my knowledge of of the sport and. Um, you know, my, my skill set that I've uh, acquired um, as a referee. And, um, you know, I tried to, you know, almost act, act as an ambassador. Um, and um, I, th- I think that will kind of benefit everybody if, um, you know, referees pick each other up and instead of, uh, you know, everybody on the sidelines trying to tear referees down, um, you know, our society is not going to go anywhere um, w- when people do that. So, yeah, just just overall trying to uh, you know be positive and, and uh, encourage uh, you know referees um, who who may be like less experienced than than me. And, and uh, officiating is really subjective and by nature. So I'm uh, people see things a little and perceive them a little differently. Um, I'm curious though with with all this angst and different personalities and different approaches, is there concern for how officials impact the mental health of their their coworker, their colleagues, um, the players on the field, the other coaches? Do you ever think about that and how you play a role in the mental well-being of those around you? Yeah, of course. I, I think that's never really something I. Um you know, am actively thinking about like in the moment um, during games, but um, I think that is a, you know, mental health is is a byproduct of um, like what shapes uh, my my experience and the experiences of my my fellow referees on the field. And, you know, like we're seeing uh, today, um, you know, there's there's so many referees who are are dropping out, um, you know, due to the amount of like verbal abuse they're experiencing. Um, There was uh, a a figure um, that I came across on the uh, one of the Maryland State Youth Soccer Association's uh, social media pages, uh, which which says that, you know, 60% of officials surveyed in 2020 uh, said their top reason for quitting would be, you know, verbal abuse from parents. Um, And similarly, you know the verbal and and physical, uh, you know, or the verbal abuse and physical intimidation, um, you know, drives you know many young referees out of the game like altogether. And um, there's a stat out out there um, reported by the U.S. Soccer Federation, um, which which notes that roughly 60% of referees uh, don't return for a second year. Um, so that's you know those are numbers that really stick with me. Um, because, you know, it's truly the young, younger generation of referees who, um, you know, uh, shape the future of, of officiating, um, in, in our country. And, um, you know, we have to do everything that we can and myself included to, um, persuade and, uh, encourage, 
um, you know, young, promising, talented referees to uh, to stick with it, you know, despite um, the adversity they may face uh, from, you know, all, all parties involved, you know, parents, players, and, and coaches. And a lot of officials are start off as a youth refereeing a match, just as as you did. Um, so getting them while they're young and, and retaining them is really important. So describe to us the process to become a soccer official. What do you have to do to get where you are? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, first off, um, the, the first step is um, attending a, uh, or, I mean, first registering um, online uh, for a, you know, referee uh, class. Um, and that, that course itself it, um, takes place in person and lasts for, you know, several hours. It's pretty long and, uh, you know, mentally taxing. Um, but, you know, I, I really learned a lot from, uh, you know, taking the, those, those classes. Um, and so, you know, when somebody first wants to become a referee, um, they, you know, sign up for a, a new referee course, but there's also um, you know, annual recertification classes that uh, must be taken as a requirement to uh, renew uh, referee licenses um, each year. Um, but yeah, once um, once I took my you know very first class, um, there is sub subsequently an on field session uh, where you know we um, practice and hone in on um, the mechanics of you know, um, like which directions to point when making calls, um, you know, certain, um, you know, hands like mannerisms that are, you know, critical um, in order to like signal to other people, like the, the calls you're making. And then there's like another portion of, um, you know, using the, the flag as an assistant referee and, you know, how to properly, um, you know, do do that um and after that's all over with um then referees will take a final uh, examination um and interestingly um you know all of my instructors i've had are very um just very upbeat like um you know cordial friendly people and they in fact encourage referees to um to talk with each other while they're taking the exam and, uh, you know, discuss through the, the scenarios and the questions with each other. And, uh, you know, we don't move on until to the next question until everyone, um, you know, is, is on the same page. So um, there's really this strong sense of camaraderie um, amongst uh, officials and, and also uh, instructors too. And um, yeah, just really appreciate the, um, the guidance I've received um, to, you know, help uh, prepare me for um, taking the field. That's interesting, that kind of team approach to taking the exam, because you're going to be working as a team on the, on the field as well. And then I know once you um, pass your certification, you, you work with assigners to kind of assign you to work in, in different matches. Um, it's a long history though of working at certain level of games to kind of get that to the upper echelon. Can you briefly describe what is the process of kind of getting to those elite premier kind of top uh, games? Yeah, the biggest factor that um, has pushed me and moving up, I would say is um, just having this ambition to challenge myself and push myself out of my comfort zone, um, you know, like, like I mentioned uh, in the beginning, um, I started off doing, you know, like the younger age groups, like the 10, 11, 12 year olds. Um, then once I got a number of those games under my belt, um, then, you know, I, I um, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, tested the waters with like, you know, 13, 14, 15 year olds. And um, I started off just being an assistant referee so I could you know, uh, visually see and observe uh, how the center referee uh, kind of operates and um, how they manage the games. And I think just from being on the sideline, you know, I'm still directly involved, but with being on the sideline, 
um, you know, I was able to pick up a lot of, uh, you know, great uh, observations and um, key takeaways that I could then incorporate into my own uh, officiating. And then, um, you know, next thing I know, I, I've, I've moved up to doing, you know, 18, 19 year olds, uh, you know, and, and now, um, you know, most recently I am, I feel comfortable uh, refereeing like, you know, high level adult men's league games, uh, college club, uh, high school. Um, you know, I've been named to multiple uh, state championships for high school um, and also a, a state cup final um, for youth soccer. Uh, I've uh I've been privileged um, with uh, receiving an invitation to attend the USU Soccer Regional Championships in the past. Um, so, yeah, I think just uh, over time, like I, I feel more comfortable uh, in my in my own skin and um, just with my ability to carry out a game. And um, yeah, I think just I uh, I need to continue to to push myself uh, to 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 reach the next level. And that center referee position is is the perceived coveted position. I I presume they're probably paid a little bit better, but they're also sort of the um, key decision maker in, in calling the the game. Um, as far as representation goes, how often do you see people of color or women that serve as officials? Do they start the process? Do they stay? Um, how is soccer approaching encouraging diversity representation and in, in officiating? Yeah, very fascinating question. Um, I think um, from a diversity standpoint, I, I am seeing a, a fairly uh, wide variety of, of um, you know, uh, races and ethnicities. Um, but as far as uh, gender goes, I think, um, there's still a lot more room for growth and improvement in that area. Um, you know, over the, you know, like 10 or nine, 10 years I've been officiating, um, you know, I've, I've, I've only come across like, um, you know, not even like a dozen like female referees uh, total, I think. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, but I, I think, uh, we as a society need to, um, you know, encourage and, and support uh, females to, to work alongside, uh, you know, male referees and um, that, you know, there's no shame in, in, in being a, a referee. Um, in fact, there's uh, a lot to be proud of. And um, what, one of the best parts of, uh, you know, becoming an, a, an offic a sports official is that um, you know, it's, there's not a huge like cost or expense um, to, to doing it. Um, you know, one of the only costs is, uh, you know, buying your uniform um, and, you know, equipment. Um, but, you know, that's, that's all, you know, pretty, uh, you know, inexpensive. And from there, once you, uh, you know, meet assigners uh, like I have, then um, you end up, uh, you know, re recouping all of those, all of those costs. So, um, you can do it very quickly, um, actually. So absolutely. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's it? So we are kind of at the end of our time, but I, I want to know, like, what's the number one thing that can be done to solve the crisis of the shortage of officials? In your opinion, what's the number one thing that can be done to solve that problem? Um, I think probably like providing more access and, and opportunities for uh, for the referees, um, one of my assigners who I've gotten to know very well over the years um, is making a concerted effort to, you know, offer more um, referee courses, uh, you know, throughout the area, um, you know, to um, to places where it might not be um, as uh, like feasible um, for people to to get to, um, and I think just, um, you know, holding, trying to sustain the, the current referees uh, in, in the industry now. 
Absolutely. So access and sustaining um, what they have currently. So Zach, thank you so much for your insight into officiating soccer and in your journey as being a soccer referee. Um, thank you to our viewers for joining us today on the Sports Playbook. In two weeks, our guest is Skip Gilbert from U.S. Youth Soccer, who will discuss the future of youth soccer. So we will see you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.